Hello everyone and welcome to Archeo Viking. Happy early Yule. Uh, as it is about a week before Yule, give or take, a very important uh, holiday um, and ritual day in my religion of heathenry, I've decided to make a video uh, covering a very important subject that comes out, uh, comes around um, every year uh, by a very loud um, and obnoxious group of people, uh, an outspoken group of people uh, that says that the worship um, of the sun uh, in heathenry um, within Scandinavia and uh, Germany uh, is a historical uh, in the ancient world. In other words, it never happened. Um, which is not what the archaeological evidence says at all. Uh, so I'm going to go through uh, the archaeological evidence um, and show that, yes, it is in fact historical uh, for uh, the veneration of the sun in heathenry um, through quite a lot of uh, Scandinavian Germany's history. Another important subject I'm going to cover is uh, the so-called sun wheels, um, a symbol that is a circle with a cross uh, in it that is popular within heathenry uh, that many feel is a representation of the sun itself. Uh, and I'm going to look at the archaeological evidence uh, for that as well to see if that specific symbol is in fact a sun wheel or if it's something else. Um, minor spoiler, it's complicated. So what is a sun cult? Well, a sun cult, uh, for you know, in the most simple terms, um, is essentially the war a cult that worships uh, a personification of the sun, whether it be a deity or a spirit, or both. Sometimes deity and spirit, uh, in terms of definition and job, can be sort of murky and uh, uh, can blend. Uh, so essentially a uh, sun cult is you worship the sun um which is what you see in this uh carving right here uh on the screen uh from norway so with that in mind is there evidence uh that there was a sun cult uh through much of scandinavia's history um and what is it well for one there is quite a lot uh, and they are uh, things such as this image right here, uh, that is the Trondholm chariot, uh, or sun chariot, uh, that is a giant gold disc that is attached to a chariot pulled by a horse. Uh, most archaeologists and uh, scholars are fairly sure that this is in fact uh, a representation of the sun being pulled across the horizon, um, as seen in Germanic mythology with Suna and her chariot that pulls the sun. Uh, and also to a certain degree, um, as they are connected through Indo-European um, culture and heritage, uh, can also be argued uh, things like uh, Apollo's or Helios's uh, sun chariot and uh, Hellenic uh, religion. Of course, this is in Scandinavia, so it's mo probably not those specifically, but uh, we do have good examples uh, from not just Norse uh, mythology uh, to support this. Um, it's certainly possible that this is something else, but considering it's a giant gold disc that is attached vertically to a chariot pulled by a horse, I'm, I and most scholars um, struggle to find uh, any other representation. Um, and of course, I am only have a BA. I'm not yet a, a doctoral uh, or a master's or a doctoral uh, archaeologist, but the, the statement still stands. Most scholars definitely see this more as a sun disk than something else. Another uh, piece of evidence or pieces of evidence um, are uh, things that many people are probably aware of. Uh, Stonehenge on the left and 
the uh, so-called wood hinge of Germany, or Pumpelte, uh, uh, apologies for mispronunciations, uh, in Germany. And these hinges are uh, widespread throughout Europe, uh, especially Northern Europe, um, in England, Scotland, uh, Germany, uh, Austria, um, and Scandinavia. And not all of them are the same size or shape, uh, but they do have uh, interesting connotations as they are often aligned in specific ways uh, to garner uh, representation of the sun. Uh, Stonehenge, for example, um, is has been connected to the summer uh, and winter solstices and has also been connected to solar and lunar eclipses and various other movements of the sun. Um, it has even been called by many archaeologists as a sundial. Um, whereas uh, Woodhenge, uh, the Woodhenge of Germany right here, Pumbolta, uh, has been aligned to the rising and the setting of the sun on important days rather than the solstices or equinoxes. Um, and then you have these items, uh, the L stones uh, or other boat ships, uh, stone boat ships, sorry, stone ship monuments uh, in Scandinavia that are often oriented towards the setting sun. Um, now in my video on necromancy that I'll uh, link uh, in the iCard uh, talking about this, uh, stone ships have also been uh, associated with mortuary rites, uh, which is also very similar to um, mortuary uh, burials found in uh, Woodhenge in Germany and Stonehenge uh, in uh, England. So um, it's pretty par for the course. Now, of course, you know, these are, you know, England and Germany and Scandinavia are all very different countries. Uh, so does that mean anything? Yes, yes, it does. Uh, again, uh, in one of the other videos I'll link in the iCard, my video on uh, uh, is Folkism Valid, uh, we have evidence for widespread trade between Scandinavia and Germany and England and even as far south as Mesopotamia, Egypt, and the Mediterranean, which I'll cover later on in the video. Um, so yes, this makes sense uh, that they would all have similar cultural beliefs, uh, especially considering Indo-European culture did reach England uh, as well. So we have this evidence from these stone circles um, and monuments that the sun very much was important. Um, what other evidence do we have? Well, we also have uh, burials with gold uh, discs uh, that are thought to represent the sun, uh, such as this one from the burial of the Etvig, uh, Etvigid girl um, in Denmark, uh, showing even more evidence of a sun cult uh, in the Nordic Bronze Age. Uh, meaning that they very much did worship the sun, uh, or at least they found it important. Um, I'm going to refrain from saying worship completely, but they definitely found it important. Uh, and much like the Trenholm disc, um, it's certainly possible that this was something different that the Ekvith uh, Ged girl had on her. Um, but, uh, you know, it was such as some just form of decoration. But uh, when you look at the other evidence uh, of the importance of the sun, uh, especially the Trenholm disc um, and such, and the presence of the boat monuments uh, and the hinges, um, it definitely leads a lot of credence to this is a representation of the sun disc. Furthermore, we have this item, the uh, uh, Never Sky disc that has uh, one, the sun on it and the moon and the stars, but has also been shown to be some sort of uh, sundial, um, which in itself does not lead to veneration of the sun, but it also does show that uh, the sun was important for determining um, tellings of time. And they're fairly sure uh, that this was used to determine uh, very important events uh, 
whether they be religious or harvest events or what have you, uh, which is something else that the various hinges of Woodhenge and Stonehenge um, have also been connected to. So uh, with that in mind, um, what, you know, this has all been in the Bronze Age, uh, granted the Never Sky Disc is probably from the late Bronze Age, and there has been some dispute whether or not it's been from the early Iron Age, um, but it's all been generally in the Bronze Age. Well, what other evidence do we have that's not in the Bronze Age? Well, I will admit, not as much. However, we do have uh, very um, interesting statements uh, and findings. For one thing, we have the Gallic Wars written by this figure, Gaius Julius Kaiser, or more commonly known, Gaius Julius Caesar. When he uh, wrote his Gallic Wars, or his scribe, or what have you, uh, it's generally attested to him, he talks about uh, fighting Germanic tribes that used his Gallic Wars as an excuse to migrate into the area. Uh, and in his fighting and in his description of these Germanic tribes, specifically the Swabi, uh, he describes them as worshipping the sun, the moon, and fire. Um, which is, yes, one sentence, but it's a very important sentence that shows that even in the Roman period of between 50 uh, and 44 BC, that they definitely were uh, worshiping the sun. And this is further supported uh, by this, the Mestberg uh, incantations found in uh, Germany uh, in the 9th and 10th centuries, where they talk about the goddess Suna uh, helping heal horses and other various elements, um, which shows that the goddess Suna was uh, very much important. Uh, one of the largest criticisms from the group with Infinite Sass uh, that brings up these arguments uh, is that uh, the sun worship is only attested by Snorri Sturluson uh, in his Prosetta and also in the uh, unknown author of the Poetic Edda. But despite what this group of sassy individuals says, um, this item right here, the Mesberg uh, incantations, so uh, shows that they very much um, did consider Suna important before uh, the Christianization of Iceland uh, and Norway and other areas. So when you look at all the evidence uh, combined, the various hinges that are oriented to the sunrise or sunset or solstices one way or another, uh, the uh, Trunholm chariot, uh, is the Nipper Sky disc, as well as the gold discs found in burials such as the Ethbigid girl, um, combined with the statements of Julius Caesar and the Mesberg uh incantations it is very much uh apparent that the sun uh was a deity of some sort and was venerated um and that's not even mentioning things like sunday uh and other <laughs> and other entomological um references that suggest that suna was very much an important deity now that we've got that out of the way, uh, we need to go and take a look at the sun wheel. Now the sun wheel, as I said, is this very popular image in modern heathenry uh, that is essentially a circle with a T uh, or a cross or plus sign, whatever you want to call it, uh, in the middle. And it is thought by many modern heathens to be a representation of the sun. However, um, or archaeological evidence, especially recent archaeological evidence, um, suggests otherwise. 
And so we're going to go take a look at that recent archaeological evidence. However, first, before we go and look at that, I have to cover one very important topic. This abomination. This abomination is not a historical sun wheel whatsoever. Um, a lot of people think it is, but it's not. It is called the Black Sun, uh, and it's a Nazi symbol and a purely Nazi symbol. It was created by Himmler, um, and we, we don't really know why he created it. For one thing, it's only found in one carving in his castle in Germany, or Austria, I forget exactly where his castle is, but it's only in one area in his castle. Um, so we don't know what it means, for one thing, and for another thing, it is only in a Nazi castle not in any historical carving, not in any historical burial. It is very much just a Nazi symbol, and it should not ever be used in heathenry. Hence the image, where a stop sign is superimposed over it. Uh, so, so now that we've got that out of the way, I'm going to move on, and we're going to leave this abomination behind. So, <clears throat> sun wheels, uh, are often viewed uh, in these carvings um, by modern heathens uh, as the aforementioned representation of the sun. However, uh, the recent archaeological evidence um, has brought a new interesting theory um, based off of the examination of thousands of these rock carvings throughout Sweden. So, generally, these sun wheels are divided into three eras uh, and a multitude of categories that I can't go into uh, in full detail, but I will uh, source the paper uh, in the comments. Uh, going to the early Bronze Age, the Middle Bronze Age, and the Late Bronze Age. So in the early Bronze Age, the sun wheels are more often than not just simply wheels. Uh, as far as the uh, researchers uh, could determine. And they are more often than not shown attached to chariots being pulled by horses, uh, which makes sense for one thing, because this was around the time that the uh, Yamnaya uh, were coming into uh, Northern Europe um, and intermarrying with cultures uh, and bringing into European culture into the area, uh, and they use chariots. So this makes sense uh, that wheels would be just simply associated like, is that wheels for chariots, not sun wheels, just wheels for chariots. You know, uh, and it's certainly true that um, wheels, some wheels such as this did exist, uh, but like I said, they were uh, not always that, um, and generally they were originally uh, wheels, uh, but then the Nordic Bronze Age tr trade happened where we begin to see images like this, the sun wheel. Um, and you can tell it's a sun wheel because one, it's not attached to a chariot, and two, you can see uh, sort of like rays of sun coming around it. Um, and they're often associated with items such as this, the sunship, which archaeologists uh, have repeatedly shown uh, through uh, material culture uh, that these are most likely um, imports from the Mediterranean, i.e. Uh, the Mycenaean Greeks uh, and the Egyptians who saw the sun with, uh, some boat is incredibly important. Uh, we know this from a variety of evidences, uh, such as glass beads from Egypt, uh, bronze from Cyprus, um, a copying of swords in the Mediterranean style, uh, and various other items, um, including this carving of the sunship. So the sun wheel did become a sun wheel but only in the Middle Bronze Age, when that Bronze Age trade was happening. Not in the early time. 
uh, the early Bronze Age. Uh, it was a very much only a sun wheels in these specific uh, times, or sorry, very much only purely sun wheels. Um, they did somewhat retain their image of the sun from the late Bronze Age, but they moved on to something else. Uh, and that is, they became more of a symbol for the spiritual world. Um, whether it be heaven or just the spirit world in general is unknown, but oftentimes the sun wheels in the late Bronze Age and early Iron Age were, uh, like in this picture, around warriors of some, some sort, whether they be um, in front or behind, or in some cases, above. Uh, and then often in the cases where the sun wheel is above, there is another circle, uh, a, a solid circle rather than a, a hollow circle uh, below them that the researchers think uh, represents the earth. So this is where the idea of the sun wheel representing the spirit world comes in. They believe that the sun world represents either heaven or the spirit world, whereas colored in uh, circles uh, represent uh, the earth. And it's often thought by these researchers that that means that uh, it's meant to represent that warriors uh, stand between the boundary of life and death, which would make sense. You know, they're uh, going off to war to kill people, and so they're going into something that most people don't stand in uh, and aren't part of. So, of course, it's, it's viewed as the boundary between life and death. So, with that in mind, and with all of that covered, um, you know, now we know that sun wheels um, are sun wheels, but only in a very small context, um, in a very small period of time. And to say that they are purely sun wheels disregards all of their um, meaning. It disregards all of the meaning that our ancestors had for them. Uh, so most definitely they are sun wheels, and I'm not saying that you can't use them as sun wheels uh, in your praxis. In fact, I do. I use them as sun wheels in my praxis. I have them on my uh, Christmas tree. I personally do see them as sun wheels, but I do also acknowledge the uh, multi-meaning and the complexity of the image itself, and that can mean a variety of things. Um, and also, it's kind of apt that I have them on my Christmas trees because Yule uh, is on the solstice, and solstice is a very important holiday. And you know, so of course, uh, the sun uh, wheel can also keep its um, meaning of uh, the spirit world. Uh, so yes, sun wheels are. Uh, just a complex image. Uh, and then also, yes, the sun was venerated. No, no amount of sass whatsoever can discount the archaeological evidence that the sun was venerated and is historical for heathens to worship. So, uh, sorry for rambling a little bit at the end. Um, this ends our video. <laughs> uh, covered a lot, and I hope uh, this helps all heathens who are uh, unsure of this information understand these things uh, that essentially, like I said, sun worship is historical, but also acknowledge that sun wheels are more complex than just being a sun wheel. So with that in mind, uh, I'm going to leave you here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, like, share, and subscribe, um, and have a good day.